Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Plastic Free Period talk. Um, so we have three wonderful speakers today. Um, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about them. But first of all, I'm going to share that today is World Menstrual Health Day. So we chose today to do this talk for obvious reasons. Um, so we have Zoe Wiggins, who heads up the Environmental Project team at Decorum Council, and she represents Decorum at Hearts Waste Aware. She is also the owner of a local plastic free business, Vida Eco Shop, and can often be found on market stores around Hearts, including St Albans. And Hearts Waste Aware is part of the Hertfordshire Waste Partnership, which is a partnership of all 11 Hertfordshire councils, which was set up in 1992 aimed at reducing waste and encouraging recycling. Between us, the 11 councils are responsible for providing waste management services to over 1.1 million residents in 490,000 thousand households across the country, county, sorry. Um, the Waste Aware team, of which I'm one of the coordinators, seeks to reduce waste by encouraging positive beha waste behaviour um, and behaviour change in all residents. So we also have Rasheen Finch, who has worked for the Nappy Lady as a senior advisor for three years. The Nappy Lady is the largest independent re retailer of cloth nappies. And last year, very excitedly, they launched the Period Lady, which is dedicated to reusable sanitary products. They stock a large variety of pants, cloth sanitary pads, cups, and recently started to stock discs as well. And you'll find out more about them later. Um, Rasheen has always had a keen interest in reusable sanitary products, wanting to break down the stigma regarding periods and helping to reduce period poverty. And Ruby. Ruby Rout is the founder of Wooker, which launched in 2017 as a female-led startup, making the UK's first ever reusable and leak-proof period wear. Wooker is on a mission to ensure sustainable lifestyles are accessible to all so that periods do not cost the earth. Growing up in Nepal inspired Ruby in her work to make menstruation a positive, taboo-free and environmentally friendly experience. Ruby believes that periods are not shameful, but are something to be proud of. So three very powerful women, um, and we're delighted to have them here today to share with us. So Zoe is gonna be talking a little bit about the environmental side um, of periods and what you can, why we need to shift away from single use disposable products. Rasheen is gonna be covering pads and cups, and Ruby will be talking about period pants. And I'm very briefly just going to touch on the emotional side of things or um, sort of the, the, the inner being, as it were. Um, so really, sh you can use the time to honour your flow, to take time to slow down, to use your intuition um, so that we're not go, go, go the whole time. And although these wonderful products allow you to, if you choose to, it's also a wonderful time just to be in tune, just to stop, just to maybe book out some time, meet up with a friend at lunchtime um, and just work out what it is you might need to shed. So it's not just the, the physical, but it's also the emotional. So allowing yourself that time to check in um, and not be so busy all the time. Um, we all need that prompt sometimes, it's always so busy. So um, I will now pass over to Zoe. Thank you very much. I will just share my screen quickly. Okay, thank you for that lovely introduction, Helena. Um, so yes, I'm going to talk about particularly plastic-free periods today. Um, so why are we talking about plastic and periods in the same sentence? Well, many period products contain as much as 90% plastic. Um, in fact, the average pack of sanitary towels contains as much as five carry bags worth of plastic. So it's a huge amount. Um, and you might not be surprised to learn that if you didn't already know, because just looking at a disposable sanitary towel, it does look plasticky, it certainly feels it. But many people are not aware that tampons actually contain plastic as well. And I'm not just talking about the applicator or the packaging, but the actual tampon itself often contains a layer of plastic in the absorbent part. And the um, string can also be braided plastic too. And when we're talking about 4.3 billion disposable menstrual products being used in the UK every year, or 11.8 million every single day, that's a lot of plastic. In fact, all of that single use, um, tampons, pads, etc., comes to 200,000 tonnes of waste just in the UK every single year. And if you can imagine 11,111 refuse collection vehicles, that's the equivalent weight <laughs> every single year. 
And what happens to all of that? Well, it's non-recyclable, so it either goes to landfill, where because of the high plastic content, it takes 500 to 800 years to break down, meaning that every single disposable menstrual product ever made is still in existence today. It could be incinerated, energy from waste, which releases emissions, or it could be flushed down the loo. Um, and I have to say, I was quite shocked by this stat. 4.6 million menstrual products are flushed down the toilet every single day in the UK, which when you think about 11.8 million that we're using, that's not far off half of all those products are actually being flushed. Um, and apart from the harm to wildlife, um, particularly marine life, that actually contributes to another problem called fatbergs, which if you look at that lovely top left picture from Thames Water, that is a fatberg. <laughs> um, they are basically huge lumps of things that have been flushed down the toilet that shouldn't have been or tipped down the drain. So things like disposable sanitary products, wet wipes, nappies, fats and oils, and they basically all clump together in this horrible mass. And to give you an idea of the scale of that, there was one cleared recently that was 50 metres long, weighed 88 tonnes, and it took 34 days for the teams to clear it. So I certainly don't envy the people that have to do that job. Um, and another problem that is caused by um, disposable menstrual product waste is litter. And litter pickers um, reported to clear about six pieces of period waste for every 100 metres of beach which when added up around the UK, that's two million items. And in reality, it's probably a lot more than that actually, because that's just what was recorded. And in Europe, they've done some research and found that menstrual products are the fifth most common littered items on beaches there. Um, which is beautifully illustrated by this photo taken by a photographer after a beach cleanup, where I can count at least 11 tampon applicators just in that photo. Mm -hmm. So I've talked a little bit about the plastic and the environmental side. What about the health side of things? Well, non-organic disposable period products are really not very good for us at all. So they contain things like BPAs, which is linked to infertility, dioxins and pesticides, which are, contain known carcinogens, um, bleach, non-organic non cotton is not bright white, it's bleached to look like that. Um, and also um, uh, fragrances. So many products are fragranced um, and that's basically parfums, also known as parfums, which is a cocktail of toxic chemicals. And the manufacturers are under no obligation to actually disclose the exact ingredients of these products. So we have no idea what we're putting in our bodies really. And not just anywhere in our bodies, but in literally the most absorbent part of our bodies. So all of those toxins are just being absorbed directly into the blood. And some disposables are not even made of cotton, rather SAPs, um, which is basically, um, it's like hydrochloric acid or something like that, and loads of other ingredients that I can't even pronounce, um, and it's going directly into our bloodstream. And if it is cotton, it's rarely organic. Although I have to say there are a lot more organic products available now and some plastic free disposable options. And if they are organic, it will definitely say it on the box because it's a selling point for them. And so if you do want to stick with disposables, then do look out for organic, but it will cost a lot more, unfortunately. Um, so tampons obviously absorb blood, but they also absorb moisture in the vagina, and that, which can cause dryness. And they can also leave fibres behind. And tampons are associated with toxic shock syndrome, um, which is like a bacterial infection and associated with high absorbency tampons. So if we can't persuade you to change to reusables by the end of this presentation, for whatever reason you want to stick with disposables, then always look for the lowest absorbency tampon possible. Um, and it's better to change more regularly rather than use a higher absorbency. So apart from all of these issues that I've talked about, I just think disposables are so uncomfortable. <laughs> I've always hated disposable sanitary towels, even when I first started my period, and I think I was like 12 or 13, um, and I felt like I was wearing a nappy and they move around and the plastic bit that's supposed to stick to your underwear would more often than not stick to my skin rather than the underwear, which really hurts when you rip it off. <laughs> um, and tampons, a string dangling around, I always found it really uncomfortable. Um, and I hated exercising using disposable products, um, which I don't have that issue now using reusables. But I'll talk more about that later. Um, I just want to talk a bit about period poverty as well. Um, this is something that many people don't really associate with being an issue here in the UK, but actually one in 10 people with periods here in the UK are unable to afford menstrual products. Um, and a further one in seven have struggled to afford them. And this can lead to people using things like toilet paper instead, or worse, things like newspaper or socks, and that can lead to infection. 
And the pandemic has only made things worse with some charities saying that they're supplying as many as six times more period products than before. And actually 49% of girls have missed a day of school due to their period here in the UK. Um, the government have actually launched a scheme to help this, um, free period products in schools, which is brilliant. Um, unfortunately though, a lot of schools have not actually taken this up yet. So if you are a student or if you have children at school or if you work at school, then I encourage you to speak to them and ask them to sign up to this scheme if they haven't already done so. Um, and while you're having that conversation, make them aware that they can use the budget for reusables. Reusable pants, reusable towels, menstrual cups are all included in the scheme. So that's some homework for today. <laughs> um, so can one person make a difference? I think the answer to this question is almost always yes, but certainly in this case, um, there's around 18 million people with periods in the UK. And one woman using disposable menstrual products will go through over 11,000 in her lifetime. That's a lot. So if just one person makes a change, just one person can remove over 11,000 single use items from the environment, which is amazing. Imagine if half of those 18 million did that. So another way that we can all make a difference is actually just by talking more about periods, <laughs> talking about what we hear today, having these conversations. If for whatever reason, periods are a taboo subject. People are embarrassed to talk about it. But the more we talk about it, the easier these conversations will be and we can help to break the stigma around them. And education is so important in that. And actually at Hearts Waste Aware, one of the things that we're working on at the moment is developing some workshops with schools and to educate about the reusable options out there. And because the earlier and the sooner people know about them, the more likely they are to feel comfortable about making that change. So my personal experience, what I love to use is a menstrual cup. Um, the moon cup is probably the best purchase that I ever made in my life. <laughs> um, and there's many reasons why I love it. Obviously, we've already spoken about the waste side, um, but another huge benefit is actually the cost. So I've got my little moon moon cup here so 22 pounds this cost me and it will last me for 10 years when you think the average woman spends 10 pounds a month on disposable period products so over that same 10 year period that's 1300 pounds so 22 pounds versus 1300 pounds is a huge saving <laughs> and they're also so easy to use i found it really easy to use right from the start and moon cup have loads of amazing um, tutorials and diagrams and information on their website and other manufacturers do as well. And if you, um, Roisin will be speaking later from the period lady and they've got loads of fantastic info on their website on how to use them. Um, and they're so comfortable. I, I spoke earlier about not wanting to exercise when I was using disposable period products before, but with the menstrual cup, I've never had any issues. In fact, the very first time I used it, I was on holiday and I was swimming in the sea within minutes of inserting it. So, <laughs> which is obviously not something you can do with disposables. Um, so it's brilliant and I've never had any issues with leaks or anything like that. It's so comfortable um, and I completely trust it. And because the menstrual cup is collecting blood, it's not absorbing it. Um, so on that day when I'm like, oh, am I going to come on today? Is it going to be tomorrow? I'm not sure. I can actually use the menstrual cup and it's not going to do me any harm. Whereas with a tampon, you've got that higher risk of TSS if you're using it and you're not actually bleeding. Um, another thing I do on that day, actually, is I have got a pair of Wicker period pants. Um, and sometimes if I'm not sure if I'm coming on or that day or the next, I'll wear them. And also I use them sometimes on the last day when my flow is a bit lighter. But I'm not going to talk about them because we've got Ruby from Wicker here. <laughs> so I'll, um, I'll leave her to talk about that. Um, but yeah, the other thing I love about the um, menstrual cup is it's so easy to clean. You literally just rinse it under the tap in between um, uses. And if you are out and about, I have to say, I'm, I only change mine sort of every 10 to 12 hours, so I don't need to change it when I'm at work. But if you are out and about when you change it, you can just take a bottle of water into the cubicle with you and give it a rinse in there or use a bit of toilet paper and just wipe it and clean it if you're out and about and then give it a wash when you get home. Um, in between periods, um, I sterilise it. And that's just as simple as putting it in a pan of water three to four minutes on the hog um, to sterilise it. And I definitely recommend setting a timer because I've definitely forgotten about it before, <laughs> not recommended. So just set a timer, pop it in a pan, boiling water for three to four minutes. There are other, other ways of sterilizing, but that's the way I do it. So it's really clean, really hygienic. Um, another thing that I love about it is that I never have to worry about running out. It is literally just one product that I have all of the time. I don't have to think about it. And, um, you know, that 
three to four minutes of sterilizing takes less time than it takes to go to the shop and buy some and then run out. So it's saving time, it's saving effort, it's saving money, and it's saving the planet. It's just win, win, win. <laughs> and um, another benefit, which I'm just going to do a little disclaimer here, I've got no scientific evidence to back this up, but I have noticed a lot less period pains since I've been using it. And I have heard lots of other women say the same thing. I've done a bit of research and found lots of people commenting online saying that, lots of blog posts. And one theory is that because the menstrual cup sits very low down um, compared to a tampon, which sits very high up, basically poking you in the cervix, um, that that could be a reason why. Um, so I can't promise it will happen for you, but it definitely happened for me and lots of other people that I've spoken for. So it could be another benefit. And just quickly, the other reason why I went for the Moon Cup specifically is because it's a UK company and it's actually produced in the UK. So that was one reason why I chose it and to keep my carbon footprint as low as possible. And um, it's made from medical grade silicon, nothing else, no nasties. Um, and they support a number of charities. And you'll often find that with small ethical businesses um, like this, that they tend to support charities. So if that's something that's important to you, you can look that up. Um, many companies do a kind of buy one, donate one scheme where they donate products to period poverty charities and things like that. So that's something you can find information on. Um, and that's it. So I'm just going to stop my screen share and then I'll just show you a bit closer. Um, so yeah, I just want to quickly show you about how to use it. And so when it comes, it will come with a long stem and that's because everybody's cervix height is different. Um, and then you can just insert it, see how much of the stem is left and just take it out and trim a little bit off and keep going until you found a position that's comfortable for you. Um, and this is actually a really good way of practicing inserting it and taking it out when you're not actually on your period. Um, and it's good to do that at a time when you're not in a rush, when you can relax a little bit because um, the more relaxed you are, the more relaxed your muscles will be and the easier it will be to take it in and out when you're not used to it. Um, and there's loads of different folds. There's nine different folds, actually, that you can use to insert this. <laughs> I'm not going to show you all nine. If you want to see them all, you can just search online. But I'll show, I'll show you the two most common ones and I think the easiest ones. So the first one is the C fold, which is literally like that. Hopefully you can see that OK. It's in the form of a C, sometimes known as a U if you have it that way around. So C or U fold. Um, and I think that's the easiest one. Um, and the other one is called the punch down fold. So you use your index finger just to push it down and then fold. And if, hopefully you can see that it's a bit of a smaller opening that way. And then you've got this bit sort of sticking out here that you can then push when it's inside and that helps it to open up. So those are the two kind of most common and easy folds that you can use. But as I said, there's lots more online that you can search for. Um, and then when it comes to removing it, you just pop your fingers in and give it a squeeze and that breaks the seal. Um, so it's got like, I don't know if you can see, but it's got these little holes around the outside that's to do with the suction. So you just have to break that seal to remove it. And definitely recommended to do that over the toilet <laughs> or in the shower, because when it's full, you know, that's the only time where it could get a little bit messy, especially when you're getting used to it. So just recommended to do that when you're sitting on the toilet. Um, so that's inserting, removing. I think that's it. I think I've covered everything. So I'll hand back to Helena and I'll be here for questions at the end if anyone has any. Fantastic. Thank you, Zoe. That was incredibly interesting. Um, some unsanitary, excuse the pun, um, facts there, but um, yeah, really interesting. Thank you. So um, what I should have said earlier is um, if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat um, and we can answer them either at the end of each presentation or at the end, there'll be time for Q&A. And we will now move on to Rasheen, please. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Rasheen. I work for Period Lady and I have a bit of a passion for reusable sanitary products and normalising it and finding you the right product for your body. Um, I'm going to mainly talk about different types of reusable sanitary pads because Zoe's beautifully covered cuts, so I'll touch about them a little bit. And Ruby's got period pads covered, so there's nothing I can add extra to Ruby's discussion. <laughs> Um, so cloth sanitary pads, we've already heard loads of talk from Zoe, loads of really good stats on, you know, why you should move to away from plastic free, pre, uh, away from plastic period products and move to a plastic free option. It's so much better from your body, so much better from the environment. So we'll have a little look at them now. I have a lovely stash here. 
There's some reusable sanitary pads. Um, they're essentially made up of three different components. There's a top layer, a core and a back in. Just getting some different types out quickly to show you. So these are the two main types of topping that we have on pads. This is a fleece topping and it's really good for keeping you feeling really dry. Um, and it's like anti-wicking fleece. And this is cotton. So this is a more natural product against your skin. But the main sort of types you've got are fleece, cotton and bamboo. Um, and that's sort of you to choose which one you want, depending on what type of fabrics you like. Some people like to feel really dry um, and some people don't like a sort of um, a man-made polyester fabric against their skin. And then you to choose a more natural, breathable product, especially if you've got sensitive skin or eczema or anything like that, then a natural product is much nicer. Um, and it also depends how heavy your flow is. If you've got a very, very heavy period, then you might find the fleeces a bit more uncomfortable um, because fleece actually can slow the absorbency down a little bit. So as you have a very heavy bleed, it might just sit on the surface while it takes a while to absorb into the core. Once you've got this top layer then, the, you've got the core of the pad. Um, and again, that's normally made of cotton, bamboo, sorb or um, microfiber. Um, and again, they sort of got varying um, eco-credentials, varying types of absorbency, and you'll find uh, different sized ones have different absorbency levels. So this is like your panty liner, and this would be a nighttime pad. I've mainly got nighttime pads here to show because they just look, it's easier for them to be seen on the screen more than anything else. Um, and again, yeah, they've got varying types of why you would choose different ones. Um, bear in mind that they don't actually don't actually need to absorb that much on a period pad um, I think the average daily loss for a period is between 15 and 20 mils a day and um, you're changing your pad through the day so actually you, you're not you don't need a really heavy um, absorbency you're changing regularly anyways and that's why most of them are fairly slim you'll find most of them are slimmer I think than your disposable pad so haven't used disposable pad for a really long time so I, I actually can't remember but they are much comfier in your underwear. The backing of them then you've normally got two different types. You have this this type of backing which is known as PUL um, and it's like a plastic backing it's laminated and it's waterproof. And then you've got other types of pads which are a fleece backed and this is like an anti-wicking fleece so nothing passes through here. Um, if, again it's sort of um, People prefer different products. Some people prefer if you've got a very heavy period, you might prefer having the extra waterproof layer on the back of your pads. Um, if you haven't got a very heavy period, then you might prefer the fleece. If you're very active, you might prefer the fleece because they sort of stick in your underwear a little bit better. Most pads fasten underneath your underwear here with a popper. Then they just sit in your pads, sit in your pants, sorry, against your skin and absorb. And then you can just change them as and when you would. But I'll talk a little bit about how you store them and how you look after them. Um, so while you are on your period, you can use your pads. And then when it's time to change, it's recommended that you rinse them cold with cold water until so the water runs clear. And that can stop with some staining. Um, and then you can pop them in a waterproof bag like this one and pop them in a waterproof bag and store them. So then it's your choice how often you want to wash them. Some people prefer to store all their pants, pads up until the end of their period and wash and re get them ready for the next cycle. Some people have a less um, smaller stash and then you'll wash sort of mid cycle. Um, or if you've got a very long period, you might not want to have pads sitting in your bathroom for like six or seven days if you've got a particularly long period. And either is fine. So once you've sort of rinsed them in your cold, under cold water after removing, you need to just pop them in your bag and then you can just pop them in your normal washing. And wash at 40 degrees, that's the most recommended one. It's really important to just wash with powder, no liquid and no fabric conditioner because it actually coats the fibres and will slow down the absorbency and start to affect use and nobody wants a menstrual pad that doesn't absorb. It would not be helpful. <laughs> um, and yes, yeah, so that's just how we use them and how we wash them. And then in between cycles, you can just store them 
wherever you want, pop them back in their bag. But out and about, you can get slightly smaller bags. That's what this one is now. This, this is actually, currently I have six pads in here. It's split into two sides. So you can put your, you can keep your clean pads in one side and your dirty pads in the other side. And it's quite a small little bag and you can use these out and about. Um, the great thing about it is you don't have to worry about having a bathroom with a bin because you're not discarding anything. Um, and what I tended to do if I needed to change while out and about um, is you can fold them up like a little parcel, pop them in your bag and then wait until you get home and then deal with them then. And you don't have to do anything with them while you're out and about. You don't have to worry about being in a bathroom with a bin, like I said, or having access to a sink. So yeah, once you remove them, just fold them in on themselves, pop them in the bag, take them home and you can deal with them then. And that's, that's not a problem. Things that you need to consider when getting started with reusable pads are um, how many pads are you using now? And that sort of will give you a guide on how many reusable pads that you're going to need. If you're using disposables now, 10 to find back 10 to 15 pads will give you a full stash if you've got sort of average length of cycle, which is about three to five days. Um, what kind of fabrics do you like against your skin? That's quite an important one. Like I've said, there's loads of different types. Um, do you want a man-made fabric against your skin or do you prefer a more natural cotton or um, I said or a stay dry um, man-made fabric and that's really individual um, we have a questionnaire on the period lady website that will go through quite in detail um, do you want a UK made pad do you want um, fabrics is the pattern important to you because you'd be surprised some people want the really really pretty ones um, and not a plain white one <laughs> Um, but yeah, we ask these questions and it is important because you are going to be spending money on them regardless. Um, so yeah, things like that are important. Zoe's talked quite nicely about menstrual cups. I'm just going to add a little bit more. We also have um, a questionnaire for your menstrual cups um, and things that we need to consider when recommending them is, uh, Zoe's already mentioned your cervix height. Um, it's really important to actually really get to know your body um, your cervix height can actually change through your menstrual cycle and it's actually lower in your vaginal canal um, than you do on your period. So check in your cervix height as close to the first day of your period as you can on the first day of your period if it's possible. Um, and that will sort of let us know what kind of type of cup we recommend you. So we do ask you to get quite intimate with your body, but it is helpful to know your body really well. Um, again, nothing phases us. Don't be grossed out by asking you what your cervix height was or do you pass clots, do you, nothing phases us. We've been asked it before and it's all about, like I said, I've got real passion for normalizing periods and you shouldn't feel embarrassed about what your body is made naturally to do. So just come along and have a chat with us. We'll ask you about your pelvic floor. Do you have any problems with it? Because uh, again, that might affect the type of cup that you can use. You might need a slightly softer cut, some, some are firmer than others. Um, if you're very active, you might need a much firmer cup than someone else because it'll hold in place against a really strong pelvic floor because we do have, have had instances where we, women have the a softer cup and it actually can collapse when they're doing weights um, and spill. So actually finding a cup that suits your pelvic floor and your body is really important. So come along and have a chat with us. Um, we're always happy to help and talk through your options. Um, Helena mentioned that we have just started stocking discs. I think as far as I know, we're one of the only stockists in the UK of them. I don't have one to here to show you, but they are um, like a small saucer is the best way to describe them. They look really big, but they're much more flexible than a menstrual cup is. Um, a menstrual cup actually sits really low down in your vaginal canal, but up Disc will sit really highly and actually tucks up behind your pubic bone and so it sits much higher if you've got a very low cervix you might not find them as comfortable and they actually don't suction in place unlike a menstrual cup so a menstrual cup you do just suction into place and it holds um, whereas a disc kind of is like wedged like i said it's wedged in place behind your pubic bone underneath your cervix and collects menstrual fluid and they have a much higher capacity so a menstrual cup 
and there's lots of different types of brands, but a menstrual cup will typically hold about 30 mils, um, whereas an average disc can hold about 60. Um, so there is a huge difference in their capacity. Um, one of the things that they are very, very famous for is being able to have um, period sex, mess-free period sex is one of the things that they're advertised for because they sit much higher up in your vaginal canal and here women are with that with great success rate of not having any problems with it, no spillages and you wouldn't know that you're on your period and women forget that they're in and so yeah if that's something that interests you again coming along I wish I had one to show you but we've just had them in I haven't been able to have one sent to me in time. Um, they're the things that you really need to consider when getting started with your menstrual products. We do stock a huge range of period pants. Um, and again, we have a questionnaire for that. And that sort of covers things like what kind of pants do you like to wear? Um, high rise, low rise. Um, what, what's your period like? We do, we do ask a lot of questions about what your, what your flow is like. But again, don't be phased. Come along and have a chat with us. There's loads of products on the market and I'm sure we will find something that can suit you somewhere. I've not had a problem yet with it. Um, if you've got any questions, then um, I think we're going to do a question and answer at the end. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Rasheen. What a wonderful practical overview um, of the different options. So we will now move on to Rudy and she can tell us everything we need to know about period pants. Thank you, Helena. Um, I mean, this is a brilliant presentation from both of you, uh, Zoe and Rosine. Um, pretty much covered everything. Um, let me, I've got a um, slide that I can share with you. Just give me a second. Mm, present mode. Okay. Um, so, I'm Ruby, um, I'm the CEO and co-founder of WUKA. First of all, thank you for having me um, at this event, especially today, it's Menstrual Health Day, and it's a big day for us uh, who work in the menstrual health industry, um, because it's the one day where we can literally tell everybody, like, talk about your periods <laughs> more than any other day. Um, so WUKA stands for Wake Up Kickass, and the reason I give the name Wake Up Kickass is like period definitely has got a lot of negative connotation, uh, whether that's your physical pain, um, social, society telling you what to do, what not to do, you know, uh, taboos around period. Um, you have got emotional pain, PMD, PMDD, PMS, that pretty much everybody goes through every month, you know, your, when your hormones changes, you have mood swings, um, and, and on top of that, the environmental cost of the period, you know. So um, what we wanted to give was like more a positive spin to the uh, positive spin to your period. So um, we are St. Open Space Business. Uh, we launched 2017, end of 2017, but didn't fully start until April 2018. But our, basically our mission is like, nobody should hold you back on your period. Um, and we are on a mission to create the most comfortable and sustainable menstrual product in the market. Um, we were the first UK's first period pants. And, uh, but I think when I, when I started a business, uh, it was just about like menstrual product creating the comfortable. But as a business, you, when you start thinking, there are so many factors you need to take into consideration. And we want to put the people and environment first uh, more than anything else. Um, that's why throughout our um, supply chain, we always consider that our factories paid ethical, um, our factory are ethical factory and we pay better ways for our, from the, from growing the crops all the way to selling here. Um, and one of the factors that uh, really matters to us is the affordability. Uh, most of the time sustainable products seems to come with a higher price tag and we wanted to break that, you know, in order to, for more people to actually use a sustainable product, affordability should be considered quite highly. And, um, and, and that's what we, are, what we are doing, is that we are creating an affordable, sustainable menstrual product. Um, and hopefully with that, we will put an end to period poverty and 
um, and make sure that the sustainable menstrual products are accessible to everybody. Um, so period pants are, they look like a normal underwear when you look at them, uh, but they completely replace any pads and tampons or cups. You, basically, you just wear your underwear and just forget about anything else. There are so many benefits to all the menstrual products, but I think it all comes down to the personal choices. Um, we always say like you are either an internal person or an external person. So an internal person being who likes to wear um, menstrual cup, uh, the disc, um, sponge, there are reusable tampons um, or, or, or disposable tampons. Um, and then the external is like wearing cloth pads and period pads, those kind of thing. Uh, uh, but it's all about choices. And that's the great thing about the whole event is that we are coming in and talking about all the choices that people can choose. And you are not just stuck with just tampons and pads. That's normally we get started at eight, nine year old, you know, when the big companies send it to their school and then that's it, you are stuck with that. Um, so I'm really, really happy to see this kind of like change and shift towards sustainable menstrual product. As I said, sustainability is not a luxury um, and we feel like everybody should be able to afford sustainable menstrual product. Um, and in terms of that, when I said like our entire cycle of the supply chain is sustainable, we use fabric such as tensile, which are carbon neutral fabric. We use organic cotton that got certified, that's global organic textile certified. Um, and even our basics range, which is made out of normal cotton, is BCI certified. It's, that means the people who actually grow the cotton all the way to make the fabric uh, have got fair ways. Um, all of our fabric that we use in our underwear are reusable, breathable. And at the end of the cycle, you can actually recycle, take it to your uh, local recycling center, local fabric recycling center and get recycled into another fabric. Um, yeah, so we are here to create the most sustainable from the fabric all the way to use. Because every wuka that you use will save more than 200 tampons and pads from polluting our oceans or going to our landfill. Um, and till date, we have saved 80 million disposables going from landfill. That is from people switching from uh, disposable menstrual product to reusable menstrual products such as period pants. And we have got loads of people who are like super advocate about uh, menstrual cup, cloth pads, and then they all go hand in hand, you know, because I think people are still exploring what works for them best and a uh, different time of the month, like even during a cycle, there might be in the beginning you might have very light period and you don't might you don't want to use cup or towards the end like Zoe said um, so at that time period pads are great some people use it as a backup um, so wear the cup as well as period pants so that any leaks can be absorbed uh, similarly with the cloth pad as well people do use like double it up especially if they have got really heavy period um, or when they're out and about you know just put a pad cloth pad around it and then just take remove the cloth pad and you can just wear the pants later on like half of the day that way um, but again it's very important to have a site it's all about the choices so, and then the fact that we all are here and talking about menstrual product that's amazing um one of the things that we really proud of our, ourselves is the people that we actually uh put it in our website and it, i think that is very important I, I find it personally so happy and many times you go to any shop and then they're always like a skinny model and you actually don't know how the underwear or how any clothes going to look like and this is what we wanted to show is like we show real people real bodies so that you know exactly how you're going to look and uh, with with different kind of underwear that we have got. As Rosine, uh, as Rosine said we have got like different style of underwear so these are our midi brief and this is um, between the belly button and your lower pelvic floor, whereas we have got some range, like hipster, ba our basics range sits really low. So it all depends on like what style and cut you like. For our bloated tummy, we've got high waist. It looks like a very um, Bridget Jones granny pants, but they are the most comfortable <laughs> underwear. Um, uh, all 
with super soft, super sustainable fabric. Um, yeah. Um, one of the frequently asked questions that we get is, how do the period pants work? Um, so, if I, I, most of our, basically all of our underwear is black, so I don't know whether you can see it or not, but usually we have got a gusset that starts from here and goes all the way to the back. So it has got like very wider coverage than your normal pad, um, both in the front and the back. Um, and so whether you are a front bleeder, black back bleeder, pretty much we have got you covered. Um, so the gusset part has got slightly thicker layers, the first part being the one that touches your body and they are usually sustainable materials like organic cotton or tensile model. Um, and then the middle layer is your absorbent layer and usually made out of like microfiber or absorbent terry cotton. Um, and then underneath there is a liquid proof layer called TPU, thermopolythene, oh, I'm not saying it. It's like a it's like a fabric that is used in your reusable nappies or like um, TP. What did Racine say earlier about the fabric? PUL, PUL. So either like PUL or like the one that is used in reusable nappies. Um, and that is the only one fabric that has no plastic in it. So I cannot say that period pants are like totally plastic free. Okay, there is a bit of a plastic, but the fact that they are reusable and you can wear it for up to two years. I think that's the best part of it. Um, and uh, obviously the outside layer is your organic cotton or tensile fabric or basic cotton. Um, so the blood goes in, wicks it quickly, the absorbent layer actually absorbs and doesn't let the, any blood come out. And then there is a leak proof layer that doesn't let it leak out. So that's how the underwear works. We have got underwear from that holds from 10 ml all the way to 20, 25 ml. Um, and it all depends on how heavy flow you have got. Um, you can get the period pants according to your need. We do not recommend to use any menstrual product more than eight hours. So um, on your medium to light flow day, our medium flow, you can wear it up to eight hours. Um, on your heavy flow day, you might have to change in six to seven hours. So do carry a spare pair when you're out and about. But like, again, what uh, Zoe said, you know, the best thing about reusable, it's always in your drawer. You don't have to go shopping. You don't have to buy more. Um, and you might need roughly five to seven pairs for you to last a four, four to five day cycle. So, um, and then the period pan starts from 10 pounds. So if you have, if you spend 50 pounds for a five pack or 70 pound, let's say for seven packs, Kind of thing that would last you for two years and and it's always in sitting in your drawer and um, you don't have to worry about um, going to the shop again after using the best thing is like just keep a quick rinse we don't recommend to soak the underwear uh, please do not do that because the absorbency can be affected by it so quick rinse you can either hand wash it or chuck them with the dark color clothes up to 40 degrees and then take it out and hang dry it inside out. You can put, it them, put them on the radiator on the winter days, but make sure you do them inside out. Um, the other way that I normally wash my pants is like whenever I'm in the shower, I just bring my underwear down. Um, with my feet, I just take all the blood out and then just put some any soap that I'm using at the time, hand, hand bar soap, and then just wash it there and then, and it's job done. It's usually like two to three minutes. Um, and at the end of the period, I just put all the underwear back in the washing machine and give one full wash so that it's ready for the next uh, next time. Um, again, like Racine said, please do not use any fabric softener because it creates a layer that, that reduces the uh, absorbency to be less. Um, along with all the business, we also campaign um, and currently we are campaigning to remove the VAT from period pants. So this year in the beginning, in January, the government announced that there will be no VAT on uh, menstrual products such as disposable tampons and pads and menstrual cup cloth pads, but have failed to remove um, period pants from it. Basically, when I first started the business, there was no category such as period pants. 
So I went to the HMRC and said, like, look, we had this new category, and then they didn't really care about anything and slammed a 20% VAT saying that it looks like an underwear, it's an underwear um, VAT that will be applied. Um, so since then, it's been like two years, I've been shouting about it, like, you need to remove the VAT. So last year, today, actually, I launched a period pants tax. Our first round of campaign, we reached 18,000 signature. Um, we did get a response from the government. Um, so they said that the revenue will be too, like, there's, there'll be a loss of revenue to the government. That's why they're not going to remove the VAT. Um, those kind of silly questions. It's almost like we are paying to bleed uh, sustainably, you know, like, um, whereas disposable menstrual products are VAT free, that creates a lot of pollution, bad for the environment, bad for health. They are taxed at zero percent, and where sustainable reusable menstrual products are taxed at twenty percent, and this is this is very unfair. Uh, so, last month we recreated the campaign again, um, along with um, two campaigners, uh, Ella Desh and Chella Quint, and then we are running the campaign again. So, one action definitely I would say is like if you could go and sign the petition, that would be amazing. Um, but we also do like other environmental engagements such as working with charities so our charity partner is days for girls who um, make menstrual product as well as donate uh, menstrual product to girls in nepal in africa and few other places but we have chosen charity partner in nepal obviously because i'm from there um we also um last year we also created nhs period pants so uh, we created a dedicated line um Actually, the, the story was like the factory, were, one of my neighboring factory was um, closing down. So they had like a lot of surplus fabric left. So my factory decided to like, uh, should we make period pants for like uh, COVID cause kind of thing. So we said like, yes, why not? So we bought some in. Um, we managed to save the factory from closing down as well by buying this fabric. Um, and recently during our Earth Hour promotion, we gave, gave some to our customer too. Um, but last year we gave about a thousand pair of underwear to NHS staff um, and obviously we support the local charities and stuff too. And, and the other charity partner that we have got is Surface Against Always who actually campaigns quite a lot to keep the beaches uh, in the UK clean. So as a business I think you need to be very holistic and think about all of the aspect of the business where we can help and that's what we are trying to do. Um, and lastly, today, because it's Menstrual Health Day, this is our campaign. Uh, it's called In My Wuka. Basically, what we are trying to recreate is like people who have periods come in different shape, size, flow, and we want, just wanted to um, honor everybody who, and thank you everybody to who, everyone who has ever done a social post on periods for being brave and talking about it in the public. The, the reason there is so much stigma, shame around period is because we don't talk about it. And that is continuously something that we tend to do in WUKA is like, we often say like, the more you talk about it, the more people's health condition or any underlying condition can be revealed. Uh, um, and there's so little research done on female reproductive health system. And I think we need to all come out and talk about it. And this is our campaign. So. Throughout this week, weekend, uh, you can post about um, your period story or anything that you wanted to say to like your school or your PE teacher, you know, uh, like anybody. Like I think the, one of the story that we, we got was recently was like how the uh, PE teacher used to keep on pushing her uh, to do activities when she was on a period kind of thing. Um, and then that actually really made it normalize in her classroom about like talking about period like regardless of um periods you know like people still continue with their life um so that is something that we wanted to do is like this menstrual health day can we a sign the petition to remove the vat from uh, period pants and b talk about period in public so yeah if you've got any questions i'm here thank you Thank you, Ruby, very much indeed. Um, and thank you for creating such a thoughtful and sensitive product that actually works. Um, many, many people will be very grateful for that. 
Um, if you could just stop sharing your screen. Mm, just give me a second. I don't know, like, where, where is the stop share? <laughs> yeah, done it, no problem. You, you could done it, all right, no, brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so some wonderful presentations. I hope you all feel a lot more informed. We were thinking there were going to be tons of questions, but you really are a shy bunch. This is not the presentation or the event to be shy, so please put any questions you have out there, or maybe the, present, the presenters have just answered everything you have. Um, one thing that Zoe mentioned in the beginning is that at Waste Aware, we are beginning to work with some of the suppliers um, of natural products to offer um, more, or make it more available, start speaking about it, spreading the word, um, and also trying to engage with schools and other um, and community groups to share information exactly like this so it is then normalised. It's not disposable products are the only option. There are some wonderful options that are much better for us and for the planet. Um, so although we haven't got that launched to, as yet, we do have um, a reusable nappy campaign and lots of the uh, suppliers that we're working with that also sell reusable material products. Um, and the offer is a 15% discount on those purchases. Um, so the period lady is part of the nappy lady and they are one of our suppliers who also sell Wooka. So um, if you wanted to apply, then that's what you can do. Um, I'll just really quickly, yeah, but watch this one, because I think more um, will be happening. So we do have a couple of questions. Oh, Helena, sorry, is it okay if I ask a quick question? Oh, let's go ahead, please do. Hello everyone, my name's Rebecca. Um, I'm actually a founder of At Bamboo Brush, which is an eco-friendly company. Um, I was just wondering, my, first of all, I absolutely love today, this is what it should be about. Um, coming from a plastic pollution side, I believe it's not being talked about because periods in general are not being talked about. Um, and I was just wondering, at the moment, what is going on in schools in terms of the curriculum? Um, us at Bamboo Brush, we deliver educational workshops across the world um, related to plastic pollution, but I just wanted to know what was going on with periods and what are the kids learning, if anyone does know that. Louis, would you um, like? Yeah, I was. So um, we're in the early days of our, developing our workshops that we're planning on delivering, and we have spoken to some teachers about it, and it does kind of seem to vary school by school depending on who takes these lessons depending okay. on how interested in the subject that they are um, so we haven't started um, we've got a survey that's going out to all schools in Hertfordshire shortly and um, so we'll know more um, sort of when we get the results of that so at the moment it's just kind of the little bit of conversations that we've done um, and it does seem to vary but I don't think from what I've heard that there's much talk at all if any about reusable products on the curriculum um, they have um, sex education in which they talk about periods and that's yeah. part of the curriculum um, but in terms of the reusable options I don't know that they're even talking about it at all yet okay. but we plan to change that. <laughs> Amazing that's good to that's good to know. Um, another question I have as well um, I think for Ruby especially and maybe um, Rosin um, so at our Bamboo Brush we have a charitable side um, and we work the Humanitas charity I'm not sure if any of you know it's Hitchin based charity um, they have two schools in Ironswacko, Ghana, and um, they've just opened a secondary school. Now, in one of the rooms that we're dealing with, I want to produce a training room, um, which is going to upskill the female students to learn how to create um, sanitary towels. Um, and I just wondered if you had any advice in regards to possibly providing a template that we could use for the fabric for the sanitary towels or any information about that as well. I think Women's Environmental Network did a pad making session mm -hmm. and they did share like the template to make the pads. Fantastic. So I think they'll be the great resource for you to reach out to. Pad wise, I'm very not sure. Underwear, I can definitely tell you more. Wow, oh, amazing. I'm, <laughs> but, for all, I'm all for moon cups. I absolutely love them, but I understand that wouldn't work in the developing world. Um, but I've yeah. Thank you so much for that, Ruby. I really appreciate yeah, that. Even in the in the UK, I think most of the schoolgirls who are just having the first period, I think parents tend to put them in 
cloth pads or yeah. external product rather than internal product yeah. as young as like nine, 10 year old. And then slowly when they grow older, then it's up to their choice what they want to use. But uh, we have seen that shift, yeah. Oh, that's really good to know, thank you. Actually, just um, adding on from that, there is, um, because it's World Menstrual Health Day or Menstrual Hygiene Day, there is a workshop tonight on Instagram and by Girl Sussed. So if you look up at Girl Sussed, they're actually doing a workshop on how to make your own period pad today. <laughs> oh, brilliant, <laughs> amazing. Um, I've seen a couple of questions that we've had in the chat. So where, where have they gone? No, what's one is what's the benefits of bamboo versus fleece in the pads please um a couple of different benefits um let me see if i've got a bamboo pad here to show um the fleece is a much more stay dry fabric so it'll keep you feeling drier whereas a bamboo will um won't keep you feeling as dry but it is a more natural breathable product um, so people can find it more comfortable against their skin than a fleece, which can be, um, so some people can comment that it, that it makes them feel a little bit sweaty. And that's really the main difference in it is it, personal preference, what, what you prefer. If you've got a very, very heavy, fast period flow, then um, the bamboo would probably be more comfortable for you than a fleece. Um, if you're looking at using it as a panty liner, um, or like using it for daily use, then you might find your fleece more comfortable. I hope that answers your question, Gemma. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> there's another um, one about tampon applicators. Yes. I've heard there's reusable ones. I thought this might be the next best choice if a cup isn't suitable. Um, yeah, I mean, they do. I, do, I actually don't know the eco Yeah, that was me as well. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. I don't know the actual eco credentials of different types of um, applicators, but yeah, as long as you're not throwing them away, then they're better. It just depends what what's in the tampon you're then using. Um, if you're looking at trying to find an organic cotton tampon, and there are some on the market, but they're much more expensive than your sort of supermarket think, brands. Um... Natural care does range of eco-friendly men's menstrual product, isn't it? Uh, like tampons and pads and stuff. They are they are great source as well. Um, yeah, and sisters is another one that. Oh, and sisters, yeah, yeah. Um, that does sort of um, organic cotton menstrual products. Um, so yeah, there are options out there. There are there is an option out there. It's not, it's not something that we stock though. Thank you, Rasheen. Um, and then talking about teachers and how much is um, covered in year five. And then I, I put this one down just so that everyone's clear. Do you put the pattern side of a pad or the plain side against your skin? That depends on the pad. <laughs> um, <laughs> this one is a pattern side, this one is a plain side and the pattern goes on the back. Um, you will be able to tell if, it, if the pattern side goes down, um, it'll feel a bit um, plasticky. It'll have PUL or TPU on the back. Um, so if it feels plasticky, that's the bit that goes face down. Um, we normally say, um, if you purchase through our website, um, have a little box on it of which way up your pad belongs <laughs> um, so that you know before you buy, before you purchase them, which way they go. Excellent. Okay, so we've had no other questions um, come in. Can I build on a question that somebody asked earlier that Roisin mm -hmm. answered? So Maeve, I think, is that how you pronounce your name, asked about um, using a moon cup postpartum. Um, and Roisin answered saying not to use them. But how long after, because I think, how long after po um, birth can you start using them again? Um, it's to your first period. It's, it's not recommended to use a menstrual cup for your lopia at all. And that's if you bleed for two, three, four, five, six weeks, it is not recommended to have anything inserted into the vaginal canal for your postpartum period. Once your periods return after your baby, yes, you can start using menstrual cup again. Thank you. But those are the days where you can use like cloth pads or, yeah. because cloth pads can be used for postpartum bleeding or period pads can yeah. be used for postpartum bleeding. So, so much comfier. Yeah. So <laughs> much comfier. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, because uh, with the new mums, we always say like take few pair of period pants in the bag when they go to hospital. Because, you know, otherwise they will just give you this horrible looking pants nappy kind of thing. Yeah. Where you can just wear like a nice comfortable underwear. So yeah. And even this is an actual this this is a postpartum pad and it's so it looks really yeah. long but look how slim it is um, and this is an actual postpartum um pad that, that we stock and yeah it's so slim and this has got an organic cotton fleece um so it's a sort of like a go-between and it's really nice and soft against against your skin and yeah pop that inside of your period pants and you've got a yes. much comfier option um for your postpartum um, stage. Thank you. That's very reassuring and look much softer than the bulky plastic thing. Mm, yeah, definitely. And if you've got stitches or anything, you don't want to risk that um, the sticky plastic turning up and sticking your vulva and then having to pull that off when you've got stitches. Not, you know, yeah, um, I know, it makes everyone squirm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on on Sustainable St. Albans, uh, the market last week, I had quite a lot of customers who were, who were like, more towards early 60s we were coming for like incontinence kind of thing yeah and then the underwear can actually be worn as an incontinence but i would suggest more like an urge or stress incontinence and not full incontinence so yeah. but it was it was good to see that women of that age were actually coming and buying it openly and not being embarrassed or anything about yeah. it so which is great yeah yeah that is great yeah we um have we sell a lot of our period underwear to um female athletes who've just had babies oh. and find that high impact sports can sort of cause a stress incontinence and yes. um and i've worn i've worn my period pants for a marathon um yeah. to sort of have the extra protection um, yeah. after two babies i felt like i needed it <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have a quick question about the moon pups as well. Um, in terms of how any tips um, in between washing, especially for, say for example, schoolgirls, when they're in a public toilet, if they were to take it out, it's quite hard to then go out and wash it at the taps. Any tips in regards to that and also mm -hmm. sterilising as well? Um, yeah, so in terms of like in the cubicle, um, I would recommend taking a bottle of water in with them because then mm. they can actually just empty it in the toilet and then use the bottle of water to rinse it in there. They don't need to come out at all um, and or use toilet roll just to wipe it and clean it in there. Um, so that would be the best way to do it in the cubicle. Um, in terms of sterilisation, I only have ever done it with a pan of water that like I mentioned, but I don't know if ratio has got some other um, tips for different ways of sterilising menstrual cups. Yeah, I mean, you can buy sterilising tablets and you can buy like um, sterilising cups. So it's like a giant cup you put your cup into and that can go in the microwave and things. OK, um, so there is gadgets, but we always just say start start with the pan of water because that is the easiest way to do it. Yeah. And I mean, if you really want to go out and then maybe if you're going away for a weekend or something and you want something, then maybe take your sterilising tablet. You can just pop it in a sort of mug of water with a sterilising tablet. Um, rather than having to boil it on someone's stove if you're staying over with someone. Um, but yeah, um, we always recommend start start with putting them in a pan of boiling water for sort of three to four minutes. Um, we recommend try to stick it, um, don't leave it loose in your pan, because if it sits on the bottom, you can actually melt one side. Um, if you get a silicone whisk and pop it inside the whisk and then put the whisk in the pan, it sort of protects it from sort of touching the hot metal. Oh, that's really good to know. Thank you. Yeah. So many tips and ideas coming through. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much to our panel. Um, a few little bits and bobs from me. I've just popped a link in, which is our waste aware mailing list, which goes out once a month. And that will include general waste um, and recycling, waste reduction, plastic free. Um, tips, suggestions, um, maybe articles, things that are coming up in the news. So if you'd like to sign up to that, please. Um, next link is for Sustainable St Albans. This is coming up to the end of the first week of the two week festival. There are many other um, activities and events still to happen. So do promote them if you'd like to. Um, tag maybe Suspense 21 and also, um, as Ruby was saying, World's uh, 
Menstrual Health Day. Um, so you can say you can come on today if you feel brave enough. Um, we have one other event, event coming up, um, and that is next week. Um, let me just share my screen and I will show you that. Um, here we go, not that one, this one. Um, so the top event obviously is what you are in now. And then next week we have the cutting edge of food waste. Um, and this is in partnership with Veolia Watford and West Hearts College. We have some young chefs who have created a Love Your Leftovers cookbook. And we're gonna have some live recipe demonstrations. So that is um, the remaining, remaining one that we have that you may wish to sign up to. Um, otherwise, thank you all very much for coming. I hope you feel a lot more informed and empowered to make a change. Um, if you have any further questions, obviously please keep get in touch. We um, have recorded this session and so I will send a link afterwards if you wanted to rewatch it um, with some of the links and details from the speakers. So thank you all so much um, and take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you everyone.